of the Lord in his house. I heard a pastor say, we have not come to a separate worship service from that which is going on in heaven. We've come to the one that's going on in heaven. And so we're joining with them today as they lift up the Lord in, in the heavenly realms. So Holy Spirit, we thank you that you're helping us. You're opening our eyes and our ears and our hearts. We surrender to you, Holy, Sp Holy Spirit. As we long to ascend into that place high, to come up higher, to come up higher, and to behold the Lamb. We thank you, Lord. We lay aside all distraction. We lay aside everything that we brought into this place. We lay it down because there's nothing as worthy of our attention as you are in these moments, Lord. Holy Spirit, we love you. Jesus, we love you.
first name. When there was a battle, a war between death and life, when there on the tree, the Lamb of God was crucified, and he went all down. And 
this train fills the temple see the Lord He is high and lifted up angels cry the angels cry See the Lord, and his hair is a white as snow. I see the Lord, I see the Lord, and his eyes are flaming like fire.
King of the saints Who will not fear you? Who will not fear you? Who will not fear you? No. Oh, they sing the song of Moses Servant of God A song of the Lamb Sing great 
God, man. And I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind.
our King. What a beautiful name is nothing, nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a beautiful name.
beautiful, 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 beautiful. no other name by which I can be saved. There's no other name by which you can be saved. There, there's no other name by which you can be healed today than Jesus. He's the King. He's the Lamb that was found worthy to open the seals. He's the Lamb of God that was able to pay the price for all of our sins. He was the Lamb that, that could stand up and, and bring redemptive power into our lives. Two, two powers that come to mind during worship, and that's redeeming power and resurrection power. All in Jesus Christ. I forgot this was the first Sunday. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. As ushers are passing out the elements, here's what I want you to say in your heart and your mind, your soul. Lord, I offer you my body as a living sacrifice to you. I offer you my body as a living sacrifice to you. That my body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Yes, Jesus. set your mind on him <laughs> if you haven't already just be there Jesus I thank you I thank you that you're as we draw to you you draw to us Lord in our feeble effort Lord God to step over this divide in the natural Lord God you supernaturally come into our lives in this presence here today demonstrate yourself Lord God but we see your goodness we see your love we see your grace we see your awesomeness we see your righteousness Lord God we see Lord God that, that Jesus that you came and you presented the Father in a perfect way you presented this walk this relationship to, to walk with with our Heavenly Father in, in a way, Lord God, that was like nothing religion ever showed us or taught us. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit. 
fill us now. Jesus. Jesus. So during worship, I was seeing this door, and Jesus was on the other side of this door. It was an open door, but I seen people in a line, and they like had these great big like bulges of pack like things on their backs and I heard the Lord say just drop it just let it go and walk into my freedom he has something new we get used to the old he's saying let go of that let go of that offense let go of that whatever it is that's bogging you down or weighting you down and come into his freedom amen, amen. what's that bag throw it away it's an opportunity to just let it go. The things that we hang on to so many times that we think are so important, so important to us. Yeah. In Him. Hallelujah. Communion is about remembering Jesus and the covenant that He established in our lives. And, you know, over and over and over again uh, in my mind I realized that we can complicate things beyond what they should be complicated right and we make relationship complicated and we 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 put our own little f flavor on it and and you know and our twists and God sometimes has to bring us just back down to to what the heart of relationship have you ever been in those places where maybe in a marriage relationship or in a friendship or a family relationship and you felt like like man you know there's just a lot going on and this is tough and sometimes you feel like you know that that the battle is going to be your your doing in in your relationship and i remember a time when when tam and i this might be a bad example i don't know but uh, we had a house and, and it was in need of great repair and so we moved back in with my mom and dad for a few months while we were trying to fix that house up and uh, and we were really good tenants very good tenants in my mom and dad's house we really were uh, we were sociable we were helpful and and all these things but but you know what we found is that we were distracted from our original purpose of our relationship together as husband and wife. And in the process of that, there, the process of that there's feelings and there's, there's emotions, there's ideas that you just are just colliding, you know, until the point that it came to where I looked at Tam and it was like, we're moving back in the house no matter what it's like. And because this is all that matters, okay? And so uh, sometimes you have to boil things down when life gets complicated back down to the source of what it's all about to begin with and everything else is superfluous and, and, and it, whether I get my way or whether everything gets, gets dressed up the way it's supposed to be dressed up or looked the way it's supposed to look is irrelevant because we're walking with Jesus, okay? No matter if what the country does goes our way, no matter what my neighbors do goes my way, no matter what my city does or whatever, we're walking with Jesus, right? He, he's, he's what this relationship is all about. So take the bread with me if you will. Father, the last thing I wanna do is complicate this relationship with you. Nor add things or, or take away things that you intended for it to be. Lord, you said this bread represented your body as a new covenant, your covenant relationship that you were offering to us to walk in. That if we had walked in this covenant, as you sacrificed, you gave yourself your body, your life on this earth. You gave up everything that this earth had to offer you. You refused kingdoms. You refused notoriety. You refused uh, hierarchies and all these things in this world to take up the cross and to sacrifice everything to receive a kingdom that this world couldn't offer. But we thank you for the body of Jesus Christ today. 
Lord, we lay down the baggage. We lay down our lives. We take up our cross today. We deny ourselves. We recommit ourselves to the covenant that you have for us. And we receive it from you. In Jesus' name, take the bread. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now take the cup. Lord, I thank you for the blood of the covenant. <laughs> Lord, I thank you that we overcome the evil one by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony, and we love not our lives unto the death. I thank you, Lord God, as we surrender and, and receive the blood of Jesus Christ as the atoning sacrifice, as our redeeming power in our lives. That God, that, that we are free from the evil one in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, for the blood of Jesus. Receive it today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Is there a video? Is there a video? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You know, there's <clears throat> lots of opportunities to, to uh, participate in the discipleship of various forms. Uh, you can get involved in the men's and women's ministry. You can come Sunday morning uh, and be a part of our discipleship classes at, at 9 o'clock here. You can also attend the, the weekly men's meetings, either at, at uh, Village Inn in Ozark, uh, except for the first uh, s Saturday of the month, which is the regional men's uh, meeting here, breakfast here. So you come, you get fed, you eat, and, and Brother Kevin spoke yesterday at the men's meeting, did a great job. I probably got at least three sermons out of what you, what you shared with us yesterday. It was really fabulous. And um, so... Uh, so plenty of opportunities. One thing that, that we've heard said, certainly in encounter ministries, is it's hard to disciple people staring at the back of your head. Right? So we like to be where we're seeing each other face to face. Iron sharpens iron. And, and so that happens in, in, in some of these meetings, uh, uh, the men's meetings, women's men, ministry meetings, discipleship, and, and just look and anticipate there's, there are going to be many more of those opportunities coming up. But, but uh, you have an opportunity to be a part of a family and grow in, in truth, grow in Christ till Christ be formed in us, right? We're still growing, right? I'm complete in Christ, but I'm still growing. Amen? I don't need anything for this world to, t to speak into my value or who I am anymore because Christ has already done that. But I'm still learning about what this walk is all about. Right? Anybody arrived? Okay. I don't know what GPS you're using, but if you use a GPS and it says you have arrived, you haven't arrived yet. Okay? We're still going. That's part of the journey. That's part of the fun. It's part of the excitement. When, when the word of God comes out, the spirit of the Lord burns inside of our hearts and we, we sharpen each other's iron and, and we grow and we mature and we challenge each other. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Who likes to be challenged? <laughs> maybe, maybe you do, maybe you don't. But it's worth it. It's worth it. Hallelujah. Uh, I want to mention next Sunday, June 9th, uh, Benaiah Snyder is going to be, be speaking here in, in the morning service, well, Sunday service. So uh, that'll be a, a treat. Uh, be something I'm looking forward to and, and hopefully um, bring some people out, invite some people. Yeah. Uh, also, be, keep in mind our kids going off to, to kids camp, youth camp. This, uh, this summer that's coming up quicker than you realize, be praying for them. We want them to encounter Jesus and, and to experience that, uh, uh, all that God has for them. A lot of young people will uh, hear a call of God during their times at camp. Things get a little bit more focused, get a little bit more serious. They're able to reset all that the world's trying to push on them and just a real valuable time for them. Pray for the leaders that go down there and work 
because we're going to need a lot of energy and, and a lot of stamina and a lot of energy drinks. And uh, <laughs> you know, I, th- I think back to the days of working with youth and all night, staying up late night and all that. My body now has a shutdown mode. I discovered it hits a point where it just goes, I'm going to sleep. <laughs> Sadly, my brain doesn't argue with it too much. Okay, (laughs) we go right to sleep. Hallelujah. So be in prayer for them as this summer comes up. Brother Ed Hurst will be speaking at the men's breakfast at Village Inn next Saturday, too, if you want to be a part of that. Pull out your your, uh, prayer list. Hallelujah. We sang the song, You Have No Rival, You Have No Equal. The beautiful name of Jesus. What do you think he could do over our brothers and sisters in this list? What do you think he's willing to do? Are we holding him? Is he he holding something back from, from us or? No, he's not. But he's inviting us to participate in his work, his redemptive resurrection power working in their lives. Just take a second, look through this list a little bit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I I think of the centurion. Speak the word only. Speak the word only. Your authority reigns in these people's lives. It reigns over the flesh. It reigns over disease. It reigns over, over uh, unclean spirits. Just speak the word only, Lord God. I think of the Syrophoenician woman, just the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you have more than enough You are more than enough for each of our friends here today, Lord God. And I know that you're good and you're you're merciful and you're gracious, Lord God. And I don't understand how shadows drive out demons and heal the sick. I don't understand how, how handkerchiefs or aprons do that, Lord God. But Lord, your glory present in their life, you're encountering them, Lord God, today. Lord God, to move out the darkness, to move out the works of the enemy right now out of their lives to destroy any mental illness Lord God to set them back in their right mind Lord God to drive out every unclean spirit every spirit of infirmity Lord God to to restore the temples Lord God into the kingdom of God in such a way that they're healed from head to toe that not one disease not one symptom can remain because of the name of Jesus of which we worship today I thank you, God, that we will see the goodness of the Lord. I thank you, Lord God, that we have hope in you, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that your power is is present today in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. You want to do the mission checks? Mission checks, you want to do them? We have our mission checks uh, here. These are the checks, but we also pray. Some, some mission support we send out, uh, not via check. It's just by digital, of course, anymore these days. But uh, uh, just a reminder of some of the missionaries that you can be praying for. They're in your bulletin there on the, uh, towards the bottom of the second page there. We support Rwanda, uh, uh, Pastor Augustine in South Africa, YWAM, Houston, Martin, and Kim Dale. New Life Asian Outreach, Lynn and Alice Young. Uh, Teen Challenge of the Ozark uh, in Branson West and Bridges for Peace uh, uh, in support of uh, ministries reaching out to Israel. All these are part of the ministries that we've coupled with and we support. So if you would, we've got checks here, but I just want you, you can do it on your bulletin. Just lay your hands on these these missionaries that we support. Father, I thank you, Lord God, as we send uh, bread. Lord God, we send this seed, Lord God, And it's just a seed that, Lord, that you would multiply it in their hands. Lord God, that you would divide it between that which they need, bread for the eating and and seed for the sowing.
And that, Lord, it would multiply, Lord, not just in their own home, and their own household, but in the field, Lord God. In the field, it would multiply that even the strangers walking by would find something there that would nourish their soul and draw their spirit and, and bring them into the kingdom of God. I thank you, Lord, for your power working in them. I ask you, Lord God, to make it evident, Lord God, as they display your character, they, they represent Jesus, Lord God, that your power is working through their lives, God, to break the strongholds, to break the, 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 the works of the enemy off of people's lives. In Jesus' name, we give you praise. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, thank you. Praise God. We've actually, some of y'all didn't think I was going to be here today, but I am. Amen. This is not a barrage. It's, it's me. We're going to be heading out uh, to the Philippines next Saturday on the 8th. And uh, we've got a really good lineup for while we're gone. We ended up having to take three Sundays, the way the flights worked out and things. We're going to be gone three Sundays. But we're going to have next Sunday on the 9th, my oldest son, Benaiah, Pastor Benaiah, is going to be preaching here next Sunday morning. And then the 16th on, the, on Father's Day, Pastor Rob usually preaches that, but we've got somebody else going to be preaching on Father's Day, and that is my youngest son, Austin Snyder. Yeah, so he's going to be, he's going to be doing, he asked me, he said, he said I, I, think I, I think I want to speak on Father's Day. And I said, okay. And uh, he said, I'm going to preach on the prodigal son from the son's perspective. So that's going to be a totally opposite direction that uh, we normally hear it. And, uh, and then on the uh, 23rd, another one of my sons, Pastor Rob Watson, is going to be <laughs> preaching. Amen. Hallelujah. So it's going to be an amazing month. Good ministry. Praise God. And we... Uh, me and Sister Betty and uh, Damon and Betty Jane are going to be spending time in the Philippines, and uh, we're going to be doing pastor's conference. Of course, we're going to be preaching in churches. We're going to be doing a pastor's meeting. We're going to be, and then pray for us because we, we're actually going to be doing a week-long youth camp. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm just not, I still haven't, I still haven't figured out what that's going to look like. But, uh, but we're going to be, we're going to be preaching uh, a whole week, five, five days doing uh, ministry uh, with the youth there in, uh, in uh, Tagbina, I think is, is the name of the town there where they live on the southernmost uh, island of the Philippines. And I'm really looking forward to this. I'm trying not to act too excited and smile too big, but, but uh, I absolutely love preaching there and ministering there. And, uh, and Sister Alice is the best interpreter I've ever worked with in all the world. And uh, she is so fun to preach with. Because, uh, I mean, she just gets right with you, and she, it, it's just like one voice. And so I'm looking forward to that, and uh, gonna, gonna be, we'll be preaching uh, every day, sometimes twice a day. If, uh, if Lynn has his way, we'll be, we'll be preaching three to four times a day. He usually drains every bit of, of energy out of you while, he, while you're there. And uh, so anyway, uh, but one of the reasons that we're going... He asked me, uh, these meetings were coming up, and uh, he asked me, sent me an email and said, can you please come? And uh, me and Sister Betty have, over the last 20-some years, have, have been the ones that, that's went and helped any time they had needs or problems or when there was problems in the ministry, when there was, you know, challenges and things like that. We've always helped walk them through that and, and help them with that. And uh, Brother Lynn is suffering with Parkinson's disease right now. And it has almost incapacitated him. And uh, so, you know, we're, we're still trying to figure out what it's gonna be like when we get there. 
But I have, I have in my pocket a prayer cloth that I'm going to be wearing while I preach today. And I have asked other pastors that are involved in this ministry to do the same thing. And then at the end of the service, we're going to pray over this. And I'm going to take a bunch of prayer cloths. I'm going to take your faith. I'm going to take all of our faith because one of the, the main reasons that God's sending us over there is to minister to Brother Lynn. And so uh, we're anticipating that, anticipating uh, the goodness of God and helping, helping them with, uh, with this uh, challenge that they're up against. Praise God. Woo! Hallelujah. Glory. <laughs> Come on, y'all can just, I mean, get excited with me here, you know. <laughs> One. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, what, in your case, did you have anything? Because we want you guys to come and make sure that they have these so, Amen. Amen. Awesome. Praise God. Ah, uh, thank you. Praise God for it. We'll, uh, and pray. I'm, I'm hoping that the, the war battles in that area have calmed down this time. Last time we were there, uh, every morning, our wake-up call, our alarm clock, as soon as it started getting light, uh, was uh, machine gun fire, 50 caliber uh, rifles or guns. It, you, you know, there, the sound of a 50 caliber gun is different than anything else. And as soon as it would begin to get light, we would, we would hear, doo, 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 you know, this big, big gun, and then the cackle of machine guns, and the, the, the fighting would start every morning as soon as it got light. And, uh, but, and so we, a lot of times I'd walk out on the front deal, on the, out in front of where we stay, stand there drinking coffee, listening to see how close the battle was, you know, where are they at today, where are they fighting at. And uh, so we're hoping... Let's that kind of calm down a little bit. Last time, God blessed us. We never got caught in the middle of a firefight, and but we we got we many times we arrived right after a battle, and uh, and so we'd go through places like that, and people would be laying on the road dead, and and uh, but we're we're praying that uh, it's calmed down a little bit. Amen. Praise God. God's got amazing ways. He knows how to take care of us. Amen. I've actually got a picture in my office of me standing in the middle of a bunch of rebels with a, with a gun in my hand grinning. <laughs> we, we, we infiltrated them and, and, uh, to get them to come to one of our meetings. There's Muslim rebels and there's communist rebels. And they're always fighting with the government. And uh, so uh, we were able to uh, infiltrate this one, one group. And they thankfully liked us. And uh, didn't didn't want any kidnap money, you know, any hostage money or anything at that point. And so we told them that we was going to send big trucks up into the mountains where they was at, and uh, we'd bring them down to our big camp meeting that was having. And and they ended up doing it. And uh, and ever that picture that I that I'm standing there is uh, rebel leaders in that area. And to be a leader, you had to have killed at least 10 people for hire. They're, they're assassins as well as fighting the government. And I'm standing there in the middle of them. And uh, by the time that meeting was over with, every one of them except one of those guys had given their life to Christ and had laid their, laid their gun down. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, they, they paid the ultimate price because they laid their, their guns down, and, uh, and almost every one of them was assassinated by the rebels after they gave their life to Christ. 
But uh, last time I was there, I got to work with and preach with some of the sons of those guys that were preachers and pastors uh, in the ministry. And so, thank God. Hallelujah. Got it on my mind this morning. Praise God. I want you to turn with me back to Revelation chapter 2, verse 17. We talked last week about the white stone and about the challenges that that we're facing. And it's beyond anything, I mean, that I ever thought that I would see uh, in this nation. Not only the corruption that we're we're seeing play out before us on, on, uh, if you watch the news, I don't watch the news. And, but every day there's stuff coming out and, and people are... Uh, corrupt, they're being paid. You know, we got, we got prosecutors that make 200000 a year, and yet they, they have $41 million in their bank account, you know, that are working. And, you know, how'd that happen? It, poof, I threw it in the fire, and out came this calf. I don't know why, you know, I don't know how that happened. <laughs> but that kind of stuff is being played out. And we've always had corruption like that, but, but God has blessed us to overcome different times. But today we have corruption uh, like we haven't seen before. But the problem is the corruption now is in the body of Christ and in, in the church, and that's where, that's where the real battle's taking place right now. In the United Methodist Church, I saw a video clip, I believe it's Taylor posted that, of a uh, meeting of the leadership of the United Methodist Church and when they would come up to the podium to speak, they would have to tell them, you know, uh, uh, that they were, you know, they, they all had their, their pronouns. And uh, my pronouns are they, them, and, and all this kind of stuff. And, and I'm gay, or I'm this, or I'm that, and, you know, and all this kind of stuff. And that is in one of the churches that at one time was one of the great fires of the gospel in this nation and around the world. They did more good to plant, they planted more churches and, and did more good in this nation, and powerful ministry started by the Wesley brothers and the, power, the demonstration of the gifts of God, and to see it, what it's come to today, to where it is absolutely inf- infiltrated and destroyed by uh, these demonic powers and these, and these compromising spirits that we've been talking about, and to the point that, that uh, large groups of, of pastors are are moving out of that and, and break an agreement with them. One that I've been friends with for years in Lamar, Missouri, recently uh, moved their church out uh, of the United Methodist, which is a big thing. They had, to buy the, they had to buy their way out of the United Methodist Church. And so it was a big step, it was a big challenge. Uh, they, you know, uh, it's a large or- organization, so they got pensions. They've got, you know, all kinds of stuff that they have to deal with, and so they they were they moved their church out of that and their ministry out because they they refused to compromise with what was going on, and and that's happening uh, all over. The only ones that have the 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 kept the United Methodist Church from completely going that direction in the last several years was the uh, Methodist pastors in Africa. They have fought against this from the very beginning and are still fighting against it, taking a stand against that. And so they have separated and uh, formed new organizations. Uh, the one my friend went with in Lamar uh, is called Global, the Global Methodist, and they're, they're very uh, conservative, uh, spirit, spirit-led uh, Methodist organization, but we see that happening in in organizations all over, in churches all over. I, we pray uh, weekly for leaders 
We call them on the phone, and we, in, in one pastor's meeting, we call them on the phone, put them on speaker, and we pray for those leaders because they are battling every day. They're battling people in organizations trying to bring uh, the gay and homosexual uh, agenda into the uh, Pentecostal organizations and into the, into the college campuses, and they're having to take a stand. They're fighting every day trying to hold this thing back and trying to keep them from taking control control of everything. They're trying to infiltrate every church and every organization. And the reason for that is because the devil has no legitimacy, and so he has to take over the legitimacy of what's under the name of God in order to have any legitimacy at all. And so he is infiltrating that which has authority to try to use the authority that once existed there, but everything he joins, he destroys, and it loses its authority, and it, it is annihilated. You know, go woke, go broke. You know, that, that's, that term is true. And the devil today is, is trying to infiltrate the body of Christ to tear it down because he knows that we are the ones that are resisting. We're the ones that's holding everything back. Our prayers, our stand, what we're doing when we worship God, everything we're doing is holding back the agenda of the, of the globalist and the, and the antichrist and the, and the beast system, and they cannot prevail as long as we are here. And so he's trying to break us down, trying to get us to give up, trying to get us to compromise, and, and, and through this gushy grace, they're trying to get us to say, well, we gotta, we gotta accept them because, you know, Jesus loves everybody. Yes, he does love everybody. But, I, but I've been reading in Revelations and he says, you've been doing a good job, but I've got some things against you. Amen. Amen. Just because we've done some good job in some things doesn't mean he closes his eye to the things we're compromising about. Amen. And we have got to, we've got to continue to stand strong. We were praying one day with a leader of one of the great Pentecostal denominations uh, here in the U.S. and around the world. And he was being confronted, the leader of the, of the uh, college campus, the college campus of this, uh, of this ministry, the president of this campus, was pushing, and, his, and another man in that organization was pushing to uh, accept the gay and lesbian agenda into a Pentecostal Bible school, college, and they were fighting for that. They were pushing for it. They were, they were rising against this. And this man who is the bishop over this whole ministry was trying to take a stand and, and we called him on the phone and he was just broken. He was in between meetings and he was broken and he, he was under such pressure trying to keep this from happening. And we prayed with him and we prayed with authority. God, remove this man. God, remove this man. Rise against him in the name of Jesus. Amen. It's time to start praying violent prayers instead of these lay me down to sleep prayers. If people give themselves wholeheartedly to this demonic, compromise, we cannot say, well, we'll just pat them on the back and hope they change their mind. No, that's when we rise up and say, you're out, you're not a part anymore, we're getting rid of you. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> We prayed some violent prayers that day, and we asked God to get to move him out, push him out. We were praying for resurrection power in that in that campus. We were praying for a, a divine encounter in that campus, and we got so excited because within two hours, the president of that college walked in and threw his resignation letter on the desk and said, I'm out of here. Within two hours. <laughs> and the man that was helping him and backing him 
came to this bishop and got on his knees and he said, I have no idea what got a hold of me. I, ha I repent of what I've been doing. I repent of what I've been about. I want to tell you something. It is not a game. It is a warfare. And people are getting caught up in this warfare and in this battle and compromise of the Nicolaitans have come in. Compromise of Jezebel leading them into idolatry and the immorality. Compromise of being dead in spirit. Compromise of being, of being of those that are have no heart and have no love. Their first love is gone. You read it in these, in these de declarations in the book of, of Revelation that Jesus is declaring and he's saying you have left your first love. You are dead. You have a name that thou livest and art dead, Revelation chapter three. And, and Jesus is talking to him. And that is something we've got to preach in this day that we're living in is you've got a name, but you're not living it. You're not living up to the name. God has, has visited us. God has sent revivals, but those revivals have become cold and they've become meaningless and now they're being compromised. And in chapter 2 and verse 17, it says, He who has an ear, let him hear. What the Spirit says to the churches. People of God, God is speaking. How many know that God's speaking? All over this nation, God is speaking. Voices are beginning to rise up and speak out and declare. Praise God. We got, we got tent revivals going on where there are no big names and, and they're being packed out. Southeast Missouri is on fire right now with revivals and meetings. Praise God. <laughs> That's happening all over and voices are beginning to rise up and say no. No. You know, the pressure to conform mostly is on fame and wealth. I actually pray and I feel burdened for pastors who are laboring under extreme debt on their large businesses and on their large churches and ministries. Because for them to st start standing up and declaring what the word says means that those buildings are gonna be gone because they can no more pay the mortgage on them. When you're paying $20,000 a month for a mortgage, 10,000, 15,000, just for the mortgage on the building, and you lose about 30% of your congregation because you got up and preached the truth of the word of God and the compromisers get up and walk out and go join some flagrant place <laughs> I was saying another day I thought man it's exhausting constantly having to tell yourself your opinion's not needed right now your opinion's not necessary right now be quiet that's exhausting but when people walk out the next thing you know you can't pay your mortgage on, a, on your building. We've got some massive churches in this nation that have done a tremendous job preaching the gospel and, and taking a stand and, and discipling people. But now they're having to come down to the place where they choose. Popularity and wealth or truth? Huge burden. In the days ahead, there's a lot of people that are going to be crushed. But in some ways, I wonder if they're not going to be set free. Amen. 
Hallelujah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't have any. I don't have any condemnation for any of them. A lot of people have been doing a, just doing their best to try to build ministries and and touch whole cities and and they've done a tremendous job but but so many of them have had to start compromising in order to keep that building in order to keep that growing in order to keep people happy I want to tell you something I love you people I love everybody who walks in this church but there's one thing I care about more than anything else is Jesus are you happy with us are you happy with us we stand over there worshiping this morning and I stand there and I said, God, all I care about is, is, is this pleasing to you? God, are we, we want your approval. Amen. We want your approval. Glory. We, we've got to start coming back to a place where we build ministries and churches that, are, that our number one goal is to please our Heavenly Father. And that's it. That's all we care about. Thursday morning. I think it's Thursday morning. Me and Sister Betty's been battling some kind of mean virus. As many, many of you have. And uh, I get really tired of this stuff. Every time I get ready to go on a trip or whatever, I'm... I fight my way in, I fight my way back home. I don't, I don't know. That's just been my life. But you know what? I'm going to keep doing it. Amen. Because I have somebody that helps me. But I've been, I've been about the most I've been able to lay down. I've, I've been up by about 1, one thirty every morning. And just not able to breathe. And when Thursday morning... I woke up about 1.30, but it wasn't because I couldn't breathe. <laughs> you know, for years I told Holy Spirit, I said, look, you've got all day to talk to me. Just give me a couple hours of sleep at night. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I tried, uh, I've tried to convince him that, you know, nighttime, you know, just a few hours... But about 1.30, Thursday morning, my eyes popped open, and it was almost like I could literally hear somebody yelling to the top of their lungs, He who overcomes! I heard this loud voice over and over and over, He who overcomes! And I got up and I said, God, what are you saying? He said, I'm not finished with that. I'm not finished with Revelation 2, 17. I'm not finished with that. I want you to keep going on that because there's more to it. There is overcoming to be done. He said, he that overcomes to him that had ears to hear, let him hear. And he said to him who overcomes, he will give of the hidden manna who is Jesus Jesus is the manna, hallelujah, praise God. We don't have to have the, the meat offered to idols. We've already got the hidden manna that's better than any of it, and his name is Jesus. He said, I'll give to you to eat of the hidden manna. And then he said, and I'll give you a white stone with a name on it that nobody knows except the one that receives it. Listen to me. He said, he who overcomes. To overcome means that there's a battle in front of you. Now this is where the body of Christ is going to have to toughen up a little bit. Amen. Because we want a battle-free relationship. We want a battle-free church. We want a battle-free life. But I gotta tell you something, to live for God is to go from one battle to the next battle. There is no battle-free. I don't care what, I have heard messages 
preached that I thought was the worst thing that you could ever tell somebody. And it was preaching that if you really have faith, you're not going to have any problems. That's a lie. That sells a lot of books and raises a lot of offerings. Because we, we are addicted to the fantasy. We're addicted to the highlight reel. But I gotta tell you something, there's more to this than the highlight reel. There's battles that have to be fought. I will not get up here and just tell you about the victories I've had. I will tell you about the battles I've fought because you're gonna fight battles and we need to know how to get down. We need to know how to position ourselves for the enemy that's coming against us where we're not gonna be knocked down, where we can fight our way out. You might get knocked down, but we've gotta figure out and understand how to get up This stuff of I don't want to have to fight any battles, that's weak. God didn't give you armor so you could sit in a lazy, lazy chair. We, we act like this is some kind of movie we're watching, sitting in our living room all comfortable. This isn't a movie. This is real life. Amen. This is real life. And there's people in this nation that absolutely hate you. And there's a devil that hates you and can't stand you. That should put a smile on your face. But it also brings a battle. It brings a war. Amen. There's times that the enemy will come against your physical body. Oh, but don't worry about it because I have a healer, hallelujah. He, is, he has healed me over and over and over. Hallelujah. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Bless the Lord of my soul and all that's within me. I will bless his holy name. Bless his na holy name for he has forgiven all my, when temptation comes against me, when the fight comes against me, when the devil tries to bring temptation in my life, tries to surround me with sin, he has forgiven all of my iniquities. When sickness comes against you, when your body is is being attacked when you're struggling. He has healed all of my diseases. Hallelujah. Praise God. If you see me down, take a picture because it won't last long. <laughs> Come on. Hallelujah. When the enemy thinks he's got you whipped and you think, think you're out, you're not out, you're just getting a break. Right. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> what, a, what a terrible thing it'd be to be fighting with an army and all the soldiers sitting around whining and complaining because they're being shot at. I just can't believe they're shooting at us. Why are they being so mean? Because they are your enemy. You have an enemy that wants to overcome you. But in Psalms 103, he also says that he has delivered my life from destruction. Hallelujah. He will not destroy you until God says it's time for you to come home. And when it's time to come home with just one small step and you're into the presence of God. Hallelujah. People say, aren't you afraid to die? I have embraced my end. I know it's coming, and I know that it's just one step. Listen to me, I've got close enough that I felt the peace that's there, and I gotta tell you something beyond anything you can imagine. I've gotten close enough.
close enough that I've heard the music coming out of the presence of God. I got to tell you something, there's nothing like it. He's got instruments that is beyond anything we can imagine. The most beautiful music, it's not words, but it is words. It's not music, but it is music. It's, it, it's, this, it's, this, it's this chorus. It's sound and color all mixed together and it just, it just flows and it moves. And it fills every void. There's not anything that's not filled by this music. You have no limitations. You're as big as the universe. There is no confinement. There is no limitations. There's nothing on you. Don't tell me about it being afraid. I've felt it. I've sensed it. I've got there. But I come back. I gotta tell you something. One of these days, I will make this little step. Fear. Fear is only fueled by the fact that you don't understand who has you. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. You just got to forgive me every once in a while. I just kind of get off in my own little world here. <laughs> I get to rejoicing. Glory. But I got to tell you something. As much as I love the presence of God, as much as it pulls at my heart, pulls every once in a while in, in worship, all of a sudden that I, I start hearing a sound that it resembles a little bit of the heavenly music I've heard and it just like it just pulls at me. It's just this homesick feeling. It's, it's amazing. But as much as I love that, as much as I like it, as much as I, I, I know one of these days that's going to be my eternity. But I got to tell you something every day, every moment that I'm alive in this physical body on this planet, I'm going to be declaring the name of the Lord our God. I'm going to be preaching the gospel and I'm going to be taking a stand for who I believe in and who I serve because He's worthy. Amen. He's worthy. How'd I get off on all that? Oh yeah, we, we gotta toughen up a little bit. <laughs> to overcome means, in the English dictionary, it says to overcome means to defeat or gain an advantage over a person or thing in a conflict or a struggle. It means to prevail over, to get the victory. Now that's not some kind of immediate thing. Boy, we like that. Especially in the charismatic and Pentecostal churches. Man, we want, we want, we want it. We want God to snap his fingers. And next thing you know, all of our problems are solved. We want some preacher to zap us and, and download all the anointing that God has into our life. We don't have to do anything. Uh -uh. No. I've seen, I've seen people come, go up to, to people that's operating in the power of God and say, lay your hands on me and give me your anointing. Man, I want to slap them. I don't say, how dare you? <laughs> you, think it's, you think it's some kind of little, little game where all of a sudden you, this ain't some kind of video game where you just, you, you, you buy an, a download. <sighs> you know how you get that? You get in the prayer room on your knees and you fight your way through. 
Amen. And you resist everything that's trying to take it away from you. You fight against every enemy that's trying to keep you, trying to tempt you, trying to dissuade you, trying to distract you, trying to disappoint you. You fight and you fight and you keep standing. You get knocked down, you get back up. You get knocked down, you get back up. And you keep pushing forward. Every time you get knocked down, you get back up and you just keep pushing forward until all of a sudden you've made your way. You've stepped into that presence and the fullness of that anointing to where now it's operating in your, in your life. It was not an all of a sudden. It was a process. And you have to pay a price in servanthood and obedience to get there. Ain't no zap. God baptized you in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Powerful. Awesome. Now let me, let me sell some books on the Holy Spirit according to Pastor Tim Snyder. I mean, everybody's going to want this book. He baptized you in the Holy Spirit, and as soon as he does, he drives you into the, into the wilderness of temptation and shows you how to use it. <laughs> no, I want to go straight to the day of Pentecost, and I want to preach. And 3,000 people get saved, and the Holy Spirit says, well, that, you know, that's coming. That's coming. That's coming. But first, I gotta, I gotta take some pride out of you. First, I gotta take some, some uh, unforgiveness out of you. I gotta, take some, I gotta take some disobedience out of you. First, I gotta show you how to walk in this thing without being destroyed by it. Hallelujah. I gotta tell you something. Too much glory on an immature person will absolutely destroy that person. Amen. That'll sell some tapes, won't it? Hallelujah. To overcome means that there's an enemy. And it means that you overcome. You overcome. Hallelujah, you overcome. You know, we love to read about guys like Smith Wigglesworth. If you've never read about Smith Wigglesworth, you need to start. Amazing how God used him. The miracles and things. He saw, he saw power. He saw people delivered, healed, raised from the dead. He was overcoming demonstrating the things of God. But one thing you don't read a lot of times is the battles behind the scenes. Because years ago you didn't, you didn't talk about that because that meant you wasn't a man of God and you didn't have faith if you had battles. And so you had to put on this persona of, of never, of, of, you know, being up here. And all of them followed after that. Matter of fact, as Smith Wilkesworth said that a man of faith should never have to ask somebody else to pray for him. That's pride. That's arrogance. He was an amazing man. But I got to tell you something, there isn't anybody that don't need somebody. Don't care how anointed you are. Don't care how powerful you are. There are times when you need other people to minister to you. You are not self-sufficient. You are not an island to yourself. You are not God's favorite little boy. Amen. You're not, you're not, you're not the one. I didn't mean to look at you when I said that. You, you might be, Rob. I don't know. I just realized I looked him right now when I said that. It's like, a, like an indictment or something. Poof. But there will come a time when you'll need somebody. I remember reading about Brother Wigglesworth in a meeting. And suddenly, in the night, he started having intense pain in his back and in his side. And some of y'all know what I'm talking about, Bradley. 
Amen. He had kidney stones. And he started having intense pain. And he struggled all night praying and believing to be delivered from this pain. All night long he struggled, but he wouldn't tell anybody about it. The next day he got up and in this intense pain he went and ministered to other people. Saw people healed. Saw people give their lives to Christ. And the whole time he was, he was suffering. God would give him some reprieve during the day when he was ministered. That's why people ask me, say, why, why do you preach when you're not feeling good? Because if I can get behind this pulpit, I know I'm about to get better. Amen. There ain't nothing like the anointing. Hallelujah. Praise God. You feel that when the anointing of God comes on you, all of a sudden, you could, you could whip anything and run over anything. I mean, it's, it's just amazing. But night after night, Brother Wigglesworth would struggle in intense pain, roll on the floor, just in intense pain. Anybody that's had kidney stones, you know what I'm talking about. I've never had them. I don't ever want to have them. I've been with too many people that have. Yeah. I don't ever want to know what you went through. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I've made the mistake a few times saying, God, help me to understand. Don't ever pray that prayer. No, say, God, help them. Deliver them, set them free. But don't say, God, help me to understand what they're going through. Woo. He'll let you. But night after night, Brother Wigglesworth suffered and his daughter and son-in-law worked with him. He wouldn't even tell them about it. Now, in some degree, I understand that. I understand operating in faith, but also understand that it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a false, uh, I don't know what you'd call it. It's wanting to be seen as, as being above that I don't have problems, nothing gets to me. I'm, and, and we've seen that for years. But I got to tell you something, it's time for the body of Christ to come down off their pedestals, off of their, and, and learn that everybody needs everybody. We all need the body of Christ. We are all one together. Amen? That's why I am absolutely open about my struggles with this congregation because I don't want to create a church where you all have to act like you're something you're not. Amen. I'm tired of it. Tired of that hypocrisy. Amen. It gets me in a lot of trouble. I get, I get lectured a lot. <laughs> About how I shouldn't, you know, I should be above that and all that kind of stuff. And I just smile at them. And bless you. Bless you. Bless you. I'm not perfect. Y'all find that out real fast. I'm not perfect. Listen. To him who overcomes. See, Brother Wigglesworth finally overcame. But he passed a hundred and some kidney stones during that meeting. He had them in a jar. He kept them. Had them in a jar. hundred and some kidney stones he passed during that, during that week. Praise God. Thank God he overcame. Amen. <laughs> he had to push through that, but he did overcome. See, he had, he had faith beyond anything I could imagine. I mean, you read about it. He had faith beyond anything he imagined, but that didn't mean that, didn't mean that, that he, was, he didn't have to struggle through that. He had to overcome. It's not all instant. And we are up against things in the body of Christ right now that are not going to be instant. We're going to have to overcome. We're going to have to overcome persecution. We're going to have to overcome temptation. 
We're going to have to overcome when people make you feel bad because you're taking a stand and they always have their sad stories that they tell you about. I can't believe that, you know, this person loves you and, and you're t- taking it, well, I love them too. But the word of God says that this lifestyle is not, so I'm not going to help you suffer. I'm not going to help you feel good. In destruction. Amen. Overcome. To overcome means you had some battles. Amen. But you overcame them. What's it, what was it say again in Revelation? They overcame him by the by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Praise God. That's, just, that's not just talking about your testimony of, well, I was saved at a certain day. It's talking about your testimony as Jesus. Yes. Yes. Amen. He has redeemed me. He has saved me. The word of my testimony. Hallelujah. He has conveyed me from, the, from darkness into the kingdom of the Son of his love, in whom I have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. And he is the first, firstborn among all the brethren. And, and he, he is preeminent over all things. Praise God. He is, he is the head of, of all the, of the Godhead bodily. And we are complete in him. That is my testimony. My testimony is the word of God. My testimony is the fact that I'm planted by a river of water. And I will bring forth my fruit in my season. And my leaf will not wither. And whatsoever I do shall prosper. But the ungodly are not so. My testimony is the fact that the enemy might come against me one way. But he'll leave seven ways. My testimony is the fact that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Hallelujah. My testimony is the fact that I have a healer, a deliverer, I have a sanctifier, I have somebody that has power on my side. Stand with me today. Man, if I had some of that old tent music right now, I could, we, could, we could really get into it. Hallelujah. <clears throat> we, are, we are seeing the downfall of those who have compromised in the church today. You know, I, I've always appreciated the wisdom and spirit that T.D. Jakes ministered in, but there's, there's a problem with, with going from nothing to all of a sudden having wealth and fame. A lot of people don't handle it, can't handle it very well. And he, he went from being this little small town preacher. He used to preach at our IMO conferences out in West Virginia where his church was. And he was an okay preacher. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't anything dynamic. It, he, he did good. But then he wrote a book. Next thing you know, become number one bestseller. Next thing you know, he moves to Dallas and buys a, a, a church and overnight had 8,000 members in his church. Overnight. He went from a little tiny church in West Virginia where he struggled to pay the bills, had nothing, had his car repossessed. And next thing you know, he's in Dallas and has 8,000 members. You know where those 8,000 members come from? He closed the doors of churches all over Dallas because people love the law of proximity. If I can just look like I'm close to this person, then that means I'm of this person and I'm with this person. And y'all know what I'm talking about. Fame, but he did a really good job, man. He, he, he had wisdom, but then he began to compromise. He taught relationship principles that helped thousands and thousands of homes and marriages. Him and Sarita used to do relationship counseling and teaching that, that helped so many people. He had a really great wisdom. And there was times I've, I would listen to him, I'd think, God, I wish I could, I wish I could communicate.
communicate like he does. That would be amazing. But he got into compromise. The enemy found weaknesses and began to work on those weaknesses. And the thing about wealth and popularity is you begin to get isolated. Destruction has come. Now him and Sarita, Sarita filed for divorce. Just recently he got banned from the church that he started there in Dallas. He got up on the platform. He's confessed to affairs. He's confessed to homosexuality. Still was at his church, but he got up and threw a fit at his church. And they banned him from the church. Told him he couldn't come back. Destruction. Destruction. Because of the Nicolaitans, doctrine of the Nicolaitans, because of the Jezebel, because, because of the dead left your first love, because of having a name that thou livest and art dead, of, of becoming too friendly with the world and, and beginning to believe the lie that we've got to accept them and we've got to, we, we can't resist them. We can't resist them if, because we can't reach them if we resist them. And, and next thing you know, you're accepting and you're attending things you shouldn't be attending and you're going places you shouldn't be going. You're hanging out with people you shouldn't be hanging out with. And next thing you know, you become one of them. Another day, Holy Spirit, I was praying about this, and the Holy Spirit said, Pray for brother, pray for T.D. Jakes. Because he is on the verge of becoming the voice of the homosexual agenda in Hollywood and in the church. He said, Pray for him because he could he could become a leader in the church, in the body of Christ, of promoting acceptance of homosexuality. And listen to me. That's not God's will. You know what God's will is? God's will is that he come face to face with the doctrine of the Nicolaitans and that he rise against it and overcome that. Praise God. I'm not out for the destruction of people. I'm not saying, oh good, they're coming down. I'm saying that, that the fire has come and pray that the fire not consume us and burn us up, humble ourselves. But my desire, what, a, what God would like to see is for Brother Jakes to rise up and say, I have, I was wrong, I, and repent and begin to preach the gospel again like he used to. The fire of God begin to burn inside of him like he used to. Are you listening to me? There's nothing stronger than somebody that has burnt out, hit the bottom, and been consumed and all of a sudden be resurrected. There's nothing stronger than that. I'm praying for an overcoming spirit to come upon the body of Christ to where we start overcoming. Father, we thank you. Lord, I do pray for Brother Jakes. God, he was a powerful voice for you. Lord, we rebuke the thief that has come after that voice and tried to steal that voice. Father, we ask, Lord God, that you raise up voices stronger, mightier. Lord, I pray for a spirit of overcoming. I pray for a powerful overcoming spirit to come upon the body of Christ, Lord God, that we become complete in you. Lord, the churches begin to rise up and declare the truth and say this is the word of God and we will not compromise the word of God. Father, that, uh, that you being pleased with us would be the only thing that we care about. Thank you, Father. Lord, I pray for the people, the churches, the pastors, the ministers across this land. 
that are under such pressure right now to conform. God, they're under in tremendous pressure to conform. Lord, I pray for them. God, stiffen their back. I pray that a spirit of courage come upon them, Lord God, that they rise up in courage and strength. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Lord, I pray, God, for this church and this region. God, I pray for a spirit of overcoming to rise up. Father, between now and August when our Whitestone Conference is, is supposed to happen, Father, I pray that a spirit rise up in this area. Lord God, that we would assemble together and begin to cry out to you. God, begin to cry out to you. Lord, there to be a resurrection of the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Oh, thank, thank you. In Jesus' name. If you've been overtaken by a spirit of compromise, you know what I'm talking about. Rather it's greed of money and things. Or you're battling a spirit of adultery or fornication or lust. Anger, hatred, unforgiveness. Right now is the time to say, God, I denounce the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. I denounce this witchcraft that's come against me in Jesus' name. Right now is the time to say, I will not. See, to overcome means that you sit yourself against and you will not be taken down by these things. Hallelujah, Father, I thank you for the anointing power of Jesus Christ. I thank you for an overcoming spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for an overcoming spirit. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Find you someone there to pray with. Begin to pray for God to give them an overcoming spirit. Hallelujah. Let every joint supply today. God, I thank you for an overcoming spirit. I thank you, Father God, for deliverance from sin, deliverance from diseases, deliverance from destruction. Father, I thank you. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Lord, we pray with authority today. We tell these afflicting spirits, we tell these tormenting spirits and temptation spirits, go, get off of them now in Jesus' name. You're not welcome. Leave now. Leave now. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, God, I thank you that torment leaves. Spirit of compromise is cast out. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Glory. God, I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah.
How many declare today you're an overcomer? Are you an overcomer? Everybody say this with me. No weapon formed against me will prosper. <laughs> say this with me. I am more than an overcomer. More than a conqueror. Through Jesus Christ. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I have been delivered from the snare of the fowler. I will dwell in the secret place of the Most High. I shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God. In Him I trust. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Lord, you're worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. Hallelujah. Praise God. If you need prayer today, if you're struggling with an infirmity or problem of any kind, I want you to come right now. We're going to minister to you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. God is good. God is good. Come on. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Give me my prayer warriors. Give me my ministers. Hallelujah. I am more than a conqueror. I am an overcomer. I am an overcomer. Hallelujah. I am an overcomer. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Praise God. Come and help us pray. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory. Thank you, Father. Glory. Come help us pray. Jesus' name. Glory. Thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you for your word. Glory. Hallelujah.
the lamb who was slain as atonement for us to the son who overcame all the power of death we praise for the stripes for the wounds for the beating you bore for the tears and the blood that was willingly poured Pastor Tim and Betty and Damon and Betty, <clears throat> as they get ready to go to the Philippines, they're leaving next Saturday, and uh, it's a journey. And you've heard Pastor talk about some of that. I know that people are praying, but as many of you guys would want to come up and and just declare over this this adventure, this 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 trip of protection, safety, anointing, God's God's plan, God's setup, and God's strength come so as many of you want to come up we're just going to declare that over their lives after we're done praying for David <laughs> Testing one, two. Okay. okay, following Saturday morning, uh, I sense the Holy Spirit saying, I'm not done yet. Um, so this is what I believe he's not just saying, but declaring. As the apostle walks under the apostolic anointing, so everyone who walks with him comes under that same anointing. In fact, that same covering and protection extends over those who walk with him. The next thing the Holy Spirit said, I, I paused and I said, I don't know if I can say that. And he immediately res responded with a bit of a rebuke. He said, whose reputation are you protecting, yours or mine? Then he answered his own question. He said, my reputation doesn't need protecting. So I got the message. Yeah. I believe this is what the Lord said. Why do you think I have allowed all the things that have come against your life it's because I have been systematically building 
and growing your faith. Because where I am taking you in this next season will require a faith you didn't have five years ago. You would have been overwhelmed by what I am leading you into. The miracles and healings you have witnessed in your very own body has been a sign and a wonder of what I am preparing to release through you, not just in this, re in this region, but will be released and activated starting in the Philippines. You will be carrying an impartation and a manifestation of my spirit yeah. that my body will need to enable them to walk in this next move of my spirit. There is a hunger rising from the very ground where past moves of my spirit were mighty and awesome to behold. The cry has been, God, can you do it again? My answer is, watch what I do when you release your faith. You will not only be depositing and imparting, but you will also bring back a reposit of what I released in the past to be released into this region. The time, the timing of this is so much more than what you can see with your natural eyes. So Lord, I, Lord, there is an enormity of what's taking place here. I've used this word before and I'm getting it back again. It's the outrageous workings of the Spirit of God. They are returning. They are returning. He said earlier on, he said, what would you think if I decided to move by my spirit in places where you are not? Get ready to move with me. Yeah. Follow where I am moving. Yeah. I do not follow where you are moving, but you will follow where I am moving. Because I am not part of you, you are part of me. Yeah. And you go where I'm moving. Yeah. So, Spirit of God, I pray that, yes, we want to see the outrageous acts of your Spirit yes, yes, we do. begin to flow, Lord. Yes. When they go to the Philippines, begin to flow there, Lord. Lord, the revivals that have been there in the past, like a mighty wind in Indonesia, it swept through Indonesia and across into the Philippines, Lord. Lord, there is heritage there. There is a ground force there of your spirit. The stones and the ground is crying out. God, come and do it again. God, come and do it again. And as you do it again, Lord, then you will be bringing it back over here because we have cried for the same thing. Lord, you can do it again. And we cry out, Lord, come and do this again. Use the frail vessels that you have, even standing here right now, Lord. You can do it through us. You can do it through them as you did before. There is no such qualification except to walk and trust in you. So, Father, thank you so much. Lord, just like when Moses turned aside to go to that burning bush, it was something that he saw all the time and he didn't think anything of it. But this time, this time, the bush stayed on fire for the simple reason because God was setting it up for an encounter. And Lord, you're setting this team up for encounters in the Philippines. They have turned aside and they're saying, Lord, what is this great thing? He says, what I'm going to do through you will be things that you've never seen or heard before because of your obedience, because of your standing and humility before me. Then those are the criteria. Those are the very qualifications that I look for in my people so that I can do outrageous things, not just in them, but through them. So Father, thank you. We look forward to hearing the reports of the outrageousness of the Spirit of God of the glory of the Spirit of God. And we say thank you in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Amen.